Hi. Miles, Haley, this is Albert. Uh, hi. Nice to meet you. Oh, and uh, <laughs> this is my daughter, Cindy. I don't like where this is going. It's going to be incredibly exciting to see exactly where Insomniac will take their Spider-Man universe next. However, there is a little voice in the very back of my brain that's asking whether or not Insomniac might have just bit off a bit more than they can chew. And that Spidey Squad is what we are going to be diving into today. But regardless, welcome back True Believers and all you spectacular Spidey fans to another very interesting Marvel Spider-Man 2, or should I say Marvel Spider-Man 3 related video. Now trust me when I say that I am 100% ride or die with Insomniac games, and I have absolutely loved every single Spider-Man game that they have released up till now. And if you're someone like me, you've more than likely been heavily speculating as to where exactly the future of the franchise will go ever since completing Marvel Spider-Man 2 back in October of last year. Well, based on everything that we saw within Marvel Spider-Man 2's core storyline, as well as the game's multiple post credits scenes, we do have a relatively good idea as to what exactly the core premise of Marvel Spider-Man 3 is shaping up to be. But given all the information that we currently have about where the story could go, it does make me slightly concerned as to how exactly Insomniac will go about executing it, which may have the potential to be handled incredibly well or possibly disappointing. So if you're excited to thoroughly discuss Marvel Spider-Man 3 with me, then definitely be sure to thwip that like button and subscribe to the channel for even more Marvel Spider-Man and other Marvel games videos down the line. So as you saw in the intro and the very last post credit scene in Marvel Spider-Man 2, we do get the reveal from Insomniac that they are officially introducing their version of Cindy Moon within their Spider-Man universe. Or better known by all is that we do get the first ever tease of Insomniac's version of the Spider-Heroine known as Silk. Now taking this reveal at face value is that it's simply a fun tease of introducing a brand new character within Insomniac's universe, which may also end up being playable in Marvel Spider-Man 3 as her own individual spider hero, who will more than likely have a very different playstyle in comparison to Peter and Miles. And overall is that I do think that Cindy Moon as Silk is a fairly interesting character, especially in the comics where she has an extremely interesting relationship with Peter Parker. And if you want to know every Everything that there is to know about Silk, then definitely make sure to check out one of my previous 101 videos breaking down the complete ending of Marvel's Spider-Man 2. But as for what exactly Silk's inclusion does mean for the inevitable future of Marvel's Spider-Man 3, that is where things could get a bit messy. As it was previously stated by the creative director of Marvel's Spider-Man 2 himself, of Brian Intihar, is that if Spider-Man PS4 was seen as Insomniac's version of Iron Man, and Marvel's Spider-Man 2 was seen seen as their Captain America Civil War, then Marvel's Spider-Man 3 is essentially shaping up to be their Avengers Endgame, which sadly may in fact be the very final chapter in Insomniac's Spider-Man franchise, even though I would honestly play up till Marvel's Spider-Man 100 if that were to be the case. Whereas it was teased at the very end of Marvel's Spider-Man 2, excluding other characters that were teased in side missions like that of Carnage and Chameleon, is that the main villains of the third game are more than likely going to involve the return of Otto Octavius as Dr. Octopus, as well as Norman Osborn more than likely finally becoming the Green Goblin, which I think that fitting in both these villains for the third and probably final game within this franchise definitely fits the Avengers Endgame comparison. Not to mention with all this incredible character drama that we might be able to experience with these villains interacting with our main hero of Peter Parker, primarily knowing how huge of a connection that Peter has with both Otto and Norman respectively. Unfortunately, this is where my own personal issues start to arise. As much as I thoroughly love everything about Insomniac's version of Peter Parker within all these games, he is not our only main protagonist, seeing that Miles is also clearly at the forefront of all these games. Where Insomniac not only made Miles a fully playable character in Marvel Spider-Man 1 before he even got his powers, but they also gave him his own 
standalone game and individual story to build off of, where both Peter and Miles' stories, as well as their own personal arcs that they were going through, did continue evolving with the next chapter of Marvel's Spider-Man 2, which pretty much equally split both Peter and Miles' stories 50-50. And despite my love for Marvel's Spider-Man 2 and its story, I do agree with some of the criticisms that the overall narrative of that game could have been a bit more well-balanced between Peter, Miles, and the main character that was the biggest attention grabber of the game with Harry as Venom, who also later on became a fully playable character, which now leads us all back to Silk. Even though Marvel Spider-Man 2's story does have its faults, it still does a phenomenal job of continuing to build off the bones of what was previously established in the past games with Marvel Spider-Man 1 and Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales, where both Harry and the symbiote were teased to be the big bad of Marvel Spider-Man 2 at the very end of both of the previous games post credit scenes. And the prospect of Miles Morales becoming his own Spider-Man was already thoughtfully layered in the core narrative of Marvel's Spider-Man 1, which was then further expanded in his own game with Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales. But sadly for the case of Silk is that nothing about Cindy Moon's character has been either teased or referenced within any of the previous Spider-Man games other than the very last post credit scene of Marvel's Spider-Man 2. And similar in the context of Miles and his character, unless Insomniac decides to do some pretty massive retconning, is that absolutely nothing about either Miles or Cindy's character directly connects them to the game's main antagonists of both Norman Osborn and Otto Octavius, where, again, both Norman and Otto already have an extremely detailed relationship with Peter Parker, as well as his version of Spider-Man. But now adding Cindy on top of all that, who has had zero interactions with anyone within this universe so far, is going to make things even more complicated. And if Insomniac is going to try and include all this Cindy Moon slash Silk character development within the final game of Marvel Spider-Man 3, on top of them also trying to showcase a Green Goblin origin story, it's definitely going to make the wider narrative at play feel pretty bloated. But hopefully, like I've already discussed in a previous video, is that we could get a potential Miles Morales situation where Insomnia could make a game in between Marvel Spider-Man 2 and Marvel Spider-Man 3, which would be able to showcase a further evolution of one of their already previously established characters. And as a bonus, we could also see the inclusion of Silk getting her own character development as well. But again, we're just gonna have to wait and see as to what exactly Insomniac has cooking in their kitchen. And I for one cannot wait. As I've always said everybody and will continue to say, is in Insomniac we trust. While I am rather curious as to how exactly Insomniac is planning on juggling all their individual characters within Marvel's Spider-Man 3, like that of Peter, Miles, Cindy, MJ, Rio, Norman, Otto, and anyone else, it's still going to be super exciting to witness how Insomniac will conclude this franchise. And no matter what happens, I, and I'm sure all of you, will be there to support them till the very end. But with all that said everybody, that's the video I have for all you today, and please let me know all your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think about the inevitable Marvel Spider-Man 3, and how exactly would you want Insomniac to manage all these characters within the game's core story? Let me know what you think, be sure to leave a like on the video, and subscribe to the channel if you'd enjoy, and for more Marvel Spider-Man videos like this in the future. Thank you all so much for watching, stay spectacular Spidey fans, and until next time, peace out.